Hi, Matt Zerby here with Wasco Nursery. I've been getting a ton of phone calls and emails and uh, social media messages about periodic cicadas. So I wanted to put together a video, try to give you some good information. Um, most specifically, I wanted to give you some information about what's going on in our particular area, Northern Illinois. There's uh, a wide variety of things happening all throughout the Midwest. Uh, in Southern Illinois, there is going to be a different brood of cicadas that are going to be emerging from the ground than we're going to have here in Northern Illinois. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. If you want more information, if you don't want to watch a lengthy video, you can go to our website, wasconursery.com backslash cicada, and you'll get some good information there. I've kind of typed it all out. Uh, also took some information that uh, I gathered from Dr. Fred Miller from Morton Arboretum. So uh, put that all together into kind of a relatively concise web page. So uh, as far as today goes, I wanted to talk about the difference between periodic cicadas and the annual cicadas that we have every year. So annual cicadas, also known as dog day cicadas, are the cicadas that you kind of see every year. They emerge every year in very small numbers or much smaller, I should say, in comparison to what we're going to see here uh, later this year. So the periodic cicadas are going to emerge in May. The dog day cicadas, the ones that you're probably most familiar with, emerge typically later on in the year, as the name suggests, dog days. It's gonna be more like July, August emerging. So they uh, both, the periodic cicada and the dog day cicadas will overwinter in the soil. The periodic cicadas are going to stay in the ground for approximately 17 years. So it's a very, very long life cycle. Down in Southern Illinois, they have a different brood. Those are about 13 year periodic cicadas. So our large brood here, which is called brood 13, uh, usually signified by the Roman numerals X and then III. So that brood is what's going to be emerging here in Northern Illinois in uh, basically late May of 2024. It is the largest brood of periodic cicadas uh, that has been counted and, and uh, uh, studied. So we do have a very large brood of cicadas that are going to be emerging. There's a couple of things that are important uh, to note about that. Uh, most importantly for our specific area around Wasco Nursery and most of our service area in the uh, far Western suburbs is areas that were prairie, areas that were cornfield, Areas that have been uh, recently, uh, over the last you know, 20, 30 years, even 50 years, that have been disturbed, meaning you know, the trees were wiped off, commercial construction brought in, or residential housing, things like that. You think about a lot of the subdivisions that have emerged in the far western suburbs here uh, since 1980 or, or whatever. Most of those areas are going to see very little pressure from the periodic cicadas. The reason being is that the soil and the tree roots that those periodic cicada larvae are feeding on uh, are gone. So they have, no, uh, they have no food source and so they basically are gone. The other thing is, is that the periodic cicada in particular only moves about a half mile per year. So if you think about some of the very wooded areas uh, in and around Chicago, you know, some of the forest preserve areas and floodplains along the DuPage River, the Calumet River, the, um, you know, Kankakee River, any of those kind of areas like that. You've got very wooded areas, things, things along those lines. And so you've got a, a pretty heavy pressure in that brood 13 in that area closer to the city. But because the insect has a 17 year life cycle and only moves about a half mile a year in the last, you know, 80 years or whatever, the insect has only moved about, you know, three to five miles, something like that. So it's going to take a long, long time. I mean, literally, you know, hundreds of years before the pressure that you're maybe seeing in some of the very old wooded areas closer to Chicago uh, or, or just in Northern Illinois in general, before you're gonna see that kind of pressure out here. Again, because this area was uh, mostly uh, rural, you know, going back, if we just go back into the 80s even, this entire area was very, very rural, mostly farmland or prairie termed, turned farmland. So we don't have the trees and the heavily wooded areas to support massive uh, populations of the uh, periodic cicada, at least uh, in, in this particular brood. So uh, that's just a little bit about what kind of pressure we're gonna see. 
Uh, I was around uh, here in this area working at the nursery in, uh, in 2007. The last time this brood uh, emerged from the ground had uh, basically zero problems, very little issues with it. I think the biggest thing that was different between 2007 and 2024 is the emergence of uh, social media and just sort of the sensationalized media in general. Uh, I've seen all sorts of headlines about this, you know, once in a lifetime, double emergence, uh, all sorts of stuff. While those things are true, we're not going to see a double emergence in Northern Illinois. We have a particular brood here in Northern Illinois that is going to be emerging. In Southern Illinois, they have a different brood to be emerging at the same time. So the state of Illinois is going to see this, what they're calling a double emergence, which is kind of a cool mathematical thing because if one happens every 13 years and one happens every 17 years, they don't happen on the same cycle except for like every 221 years. And that happens to be this year. So we in the state of Illinois are going to see that, but it's not like we're going to have double the emergence here in Northern Illinois or down in Southern Illinois. Now, if you are on the border down in like say Springfield, it, it, which is kind of the border between the Southern brood and this Northern brood, you may see a little heavier pressure down there than we're seeing up here in Northern Illinois. So let's just talk about periodic cicadas in general. Uh, so they will overwinter or, or spend 17 years in the soil uh, feeding on roots. They feed, um, let's just call it lightly. There's really been uh, no evidence that they cause significant damage at all to trees. Keep in mind, this is not an invasive insect. It's been here for literally decades, if not centuries, right? So been here a really long time. Uh, our trees have all learned to adapt to it, all that kind of stuff. So doesn't really cause a whole lot of harm in terms of the root systems. Uh, however, the insect will emerge, the adult uh, or kind of a, a larval state is going to kind of crawl up. You're going to see them kind of crawling up on the trunks of trees and you're going to see a little exoskeleton. So it's kind of this uh, sort of nymph that's going to crawl out of the ground up onto the tree and it's going to hatch out of that uh, or shed that, that skin, that exoskeleton and emerge as the adult periodic cicada. They're really kind of cool looking. They have uh, almost translucent wings with bright orange veining. They have bright red eyes. They're a little bit smaller than the annual dog day cicada that you might be familiar with. They're like this big. The periodic cicadas are about three quarters of that size. So they are a little bit smaller. Um, oddly enough, they're edible. Uh, the Native Americans used to eat them. Um, people in general will oftentimes eat them. Animals uh, will eat them and birds will eat them. However, in some of the areas, like maybe closer to Chicago, if you've got like a really heavily wooded area that has been undisturbed for decades, if not more, uh, there, there were reports, you know, back in 2007 of people literally having to use snow shovels to clear their sidewalks of all of the uh, adults after they have laid their eggs and then died, which is uh, kind of crazy. There are natural predators to it and uh, they are not harmful to people. They don't bite, they don't sting. Uh, if you're concerned there, uh, it can ease your worries in that regard. So the insect is going to emerge, it's gonna go up the tree, uh, it's going to come out. They're going to fly around, they're going to mate, and then they, the females are going to lay eggs. It's when they're laying eggs, they basically kind of drill a very small hole in fine branches, you know, about like an eighth inch roughly uh, diameter branch is what they like. So woody plants, they're not going to affect your tomatoes or your pepper plants or your flowers, anything like that. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about your perennials like coral bells and, and coneflower, all that kind of stuff. But they will lay their eggs on woody branches of predominantly trees, but they will do shrubs as well. They will drill a series of holes and deposit some small eggs in there. That can cause some damage on very young trees, so, you know, if you had little sapling trees, those are trees that may have some damage done to them. On an older tree like this large oak that I'm standing in front of, all you're going to see is what we would just call a little bit of natural pruning. They may lay eggs on the branches, on the finer branches out towards the tips of the tree. It's going to cause, you know, kind of natural pruning and that's it. So big trees, anything, you know, two inch trunk diameter and larger, you're not going to notice uh, any damage uh, or any significant damage for sure. On your younger trees, really the only good protection is netting. I don't recommend the use of insecticides for uh, cicadas. There have been some studies that show some of the insecticides applied to the soil 
taken in through the tree. You'd have to do this very early this year, like in April, early April, go through the tree. Might show some success in terms of keeping the egg laying to a minimum, but in terms of trying to spray the insect, the, the cost and the amount of chemical and just the, the rest of sort of the environmental damage that is caused by that kind of spraying, I would not suggest that at all. So uh, I haven't heard of this, but if, you know, if somebody's knocking on your door offering to take care of cicadas, none of that would surprise me. Um, you know, don't, don't fall for that. Don't, uh, don't get on board with that. So the insects are gonna lay their egg. Literally, they're gonna just start falling out of the trees and falling out of the sky, so to speak, and you will find them laying on the ground or out in the lawn. Uh, again, they cause no harm. If you're in an area that has a really heavy population, you'd actually notice an odor because there's so many of them. But you can throw them uh, in your garden beds. They actually are fertilizer. So as, they, as those bodies decompose and stuff, they're gonna offer nutrients back into the soil. Uh, so throw them in your garden, throw them in your uh, flower beds. They're not gonna cause any harm there. So I really just wanted to shoot this video to ease some of the fears and concerns that uh, I, I have heard from people who have read some of those headlines or seen uh, certain things on the news or online where they've said, be like, you know, cicada Armageddon happening and, you know, thinking that we're gonna be living in some barren wasteland and that really couldn't be further from the truth. So I hope that uh, you will uh, take a little time to uh, read through our web page again, which is wasconursery.com backslash cicada. Uh, the Morton Arboretum, wonderful information about it. University of Illinois is a very good resource uh, for those in our area. If you live out of the area, uh, you might want to check with your university or your extension office to get some accurate information for what you might be experiencing. I hope that helps. It's actually kind of a cool thing that's happening. You know, not everybody gets to witness this. And, uh, you know, this year with this uh, double emergence, it's kind of cool, Matt, but you know what? It's not going to be anything uh, overly crazy. So thanks for watching. We've got tons of great videos on our website, on our YouTube page. So check us out there. Thanks for watching.